let's add custom drops to vanilla loot tables. Fortune Fabric courses with advanced topics such as entities, custom structures, and 3D armor models linked in the description below. Alright friends, let's back IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be adding custom drops to already existing vanilla loot tables. So this is very interesting and probably something that some of you have already thought about. You were like, well, you know, I know we can add you know, loot tables for our own blocks, but how do we modify loot tables from vanilla and add stuff, for example, to the creeper or maybe our own custom seeds to the grass block? How do we do this? And the way that we do this is with a new class in the util package. And this is going to be the mod loot table modifiers. Now the contents of this class I will copy over, but this is all available to you in the description below GitHub repository and individual gist as well. And let's first of all take a look at this one right here, the identifiers. So you can see the identifiers here. Those are always identifiers that point to, of course, the Minecraft namespace and then a particular path. In this case, blocks slash grass, chests slash eagle chest, and then entities reaper. Now, where does this come from? Well, if we go down to the external libraries all the way to right here, this net Minecraft project map and so on and so forth in the data folder, we can go to Minecraft loot tables. And then here you can see blocks, chest, entities. And then if we, for example, take a look at entities or let, rather look at chests, that's a little easier. You can see, for example, igloo underscore chest. So this is what it refers to. It refers to the JSON files under the Minecraft namespace in the loot tables folder. So definitely take a look at that and then you can pretty much modify any of those. Now, in theory, you can also take away from them so you can remove stuff that drops. I highly recommend not doing this because it might make your mod incompatible with other mods that expect, for example, the creeper to drop normal gunpowder. If that is not the case, then your mod will no longer be compatible with that mod. So highly recommend don't do this. Just keep that in mind. Now, in our case, also, we're just going to add stuff and we're really only going to make a very simple way to adding stuff. You can, with this fabric loot pool builder here, you can see you can do a whole bunch of stuff. So if we actually take a look at this class, you can see there's some there's roles that you can define with. You can define certain conditions here. You can apply certain fun loot functions. I highly recommend you take your time with this. Take a look at how this works. Maybe even look at some GitHub repositories of popular mods that maybe are you know under a good license that you can use. And then basically taking a look at this. So how does this work? Well, we're using the loot table loading callback event here, and then just registering it. And then just calling, well, I mean, pretty much everything that is in here. And we're just checking, hey, is the ID that is currently being loaded? So the loot table that is now loaded, is that the same as, you know, in this case, the grass block ID? Then we know, okay, we're now looking for not the leaves block loot table, of course, but the grass block loot table, right? Now we know, okay, this is definitely for the grass block loot table. And then inside of here, we can now add the grape seeds to the grass loot table. And the way we're doing it is basically we're getting a 35% chance here of this dropping of this particular item dropping, and we're dropping either one or two. That is the general idea here. And this is pretty much how you can modify this. This is a very easy version. Now, once again, you can build crazy things with this, with the fabric loot pool builder. I highly recommend playing around with this. And once again, looking at some other examples here, here you can see in the igloo's chest, we have a hundred percent chance of the dousing rod being added. And then just so that you can see this, we are also adding the lilac flower bulb to the creeper for a, with a hundred percent chance here as well. So this is pretty much how easy it is to, well, change the block here, a chest and then here an entity as well. It's really freaking easy. Now this method right here, we just want to call this. So let's just go in here and let's just call this right here. So we're just going to say mod loot table modifiers dot modify loot tables. Let's just bunch those together. There you go. That's, that looks a little nicer. And that is literally all that we need to do. I mean, to add this and that is it. Now the loot tables will not be replaced, but there will be stuff added to the loot tables. So for completion's sake, let's see if it works. Oh, right, friends, I was back in Minecraft. So let's just, first of all, slay a creeper and let's see. There we go. The lilac flower bulb has successfully dropped here. And then let's actually, um, let's actually kill the other creeper as well. Just when I switch to survival mode, we don't want it coming after me. Um, so let's see. So those would be ferns. I actually don't think that these, that these work. So we want this one and there we go. We actually got lucky grape seeds uh, also dropping here. And then we're also, of course, directly next to a igloo right here. So let's just go down and let's see what we can see in the chest. There we are. And there it is. The dousing rod, of course, working fine. That's actually how easy it is to add some custom items to already existing vanilla loot tables.
Right, but that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated and I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.